It's an honor to be here, and I am so grateful and thankful uh, to be in the house, and I want to honor Apostle Feldshaw, Pastor Suzanne, thank you so much for having me. It's my honor. <laughs> it's absolutely mine. Uh, what a wonderful house. I just love to be here. I'm going to stop touching my screen. I think somebody was uh, copying some stuff, so you're free to do that in the back. I sent my notes in very late. Um, would you stand with me? I'm just going to hop in to the Word of God. Is anybody ready to hop in this morning? I, someone over here is ready, but I was standing right here and I heard very little. Is anyone ready to hop into the Word of God this morning? This is the only book you'll read where the author is present. And this is the only book that you'll read that is alive. And so even though you have heard this text before, and even though you have, um, you know, and this is a short, it's a short scripture, so we're not going to uh, be doing this section too long. Um, but even though you may have heard this before, I believe that we can always learn something new from the same thing. God has another way to reveal himself to us through his word. So if you can open up your Bibles, if you have them, or open up your iPhone and open up that Bible app, we're going to go to the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 15. And this is just one little snippet of a verse that we're going to read. And it simply says this. I do not understand what I do. Well, how many people can say amen right there? <laughs> Already, Paul's reading us, okay? I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, that I do. That's the thing that I do. Paul is, is writing right here, and I feel like he's kind of having a discussion, you know, between the things that he longs for, the things that he wants to do, and the actions that actually happen. And, and I feel like we can all relate because I'm sure all of us have said, you know, I want to get up early and go to the gym but that bed has a chokehold on me. That, that bed has a grip and I can't seem to get, I want to fast. I want to fast and I want to I eat healthy. But Popeye's has these original hot, I need to get it endorsed because I have preached the gospel of Popeye's. I'm not even kidding you. These wings and I just, I have to have them. There's what, there's what I long to do. And what I actually do, I want to I wanna pray more. I want to spend more time in prayer. But then I just scroll on Instagram. Or I'm going to read. I want to read the Word of God. I want to read it. I want to memorize it. I want to understand it and know it. But Netflix has released something that I haven't seen yet. We have this, this fight. The Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we find ourselves in this tension, Paul's intention between what I want to do, that's the thing I don't do. And the thing I don't want to do that I hate, that is the thing that I do. And people in the room can understand because uh, you might be an, an entrepreneur in the room and there's a great dream that you have that you want to do. But then you have the tension of what the bank account says you can do. Or you have the inner voice that tells you no one is going to come to that. No one's going to buy that product. No one needs that service. And you find yourself in tension. Married people, there's the idea of what we want it to be like. And then there's the struggle with what it actually is. There's tension sometimes where we are. Single people, you want to you wanna be loved one day. You, but, but you hear this little voice that no one is ever going to love you. Why would anyone ever choose you? We all experience tension. There's tension in the room right now. There's tension in because, because y'all are thinking, is she ever going to tell us to sit down? I've been standing for a long time. I, I wasn't prepared for this. You know, she usually reads the scripture and then she prays. And then we all say this title together and we sit down. But she, I, has she forgotten about us? Did she completely forget to dismiss us and have us? Where's Pastor Feldshaw anyway? Why is he not speaking this morning? I came to hear Pastor Feldshaw. Who is this uh, blonde girl up here? There's tension in the room. There's tension in the room, and I want to talk to someone today who is living in tension. Can we pray together, one city? Father, 
I thank you, Lord God, that you, um, you are the author of all things, Father, and that you work all things together for the good of them that love you. And Father, I believe I'm in a room full of people who love you today. And I pray, Lord God, that as we dive into this word, you will begin to show yourself to us anew, Father God. You will be able, uh, that you will begin, Lord God, just to expose yourself to us, Lord God, your grace and your mercy, Lord. Let this word, Father God, let me sit down and you stand up. I sit myself down. No ego, no pride, Father God. This is not for me. This is for your glory. This is a moment, Lord God, where I want to step out of the way, Father, that you might teach this word, Father God, because you know it better than anyone. You are this word, Lord God. Let your name be lifted high in the room today, Father God, and let us grow from the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, now you can sit down, turn to your neighbor and say, living intention. <laughs> I want to talk to the people who are living in tension. And can I tell you something? You have to have tension. And you should probably be wary of people who don't live with at least some type of tension. Now you think of tension and you think like, this is bad. Oh, there's tension in the room. No, tension is really a higher inner calling that there is something better. Tension tells you, yeah, you should get out of bed and go to the gym. There's better for you. There's, there's a healthier experience for you. T tension tells you, yeah, you should. You should read the word of God even if your flesh doesn't want to. And so when someone has no tension, that person has decided that they don't really want anything better. Tension pulls you to better. And when you lack tension of accomplishing anything, you have accepted a mediocre life. God has not designed you for a mediocre life. He has designed you for better. He has designed you for bigger. And so be wary of anyone who has no tension. They are stagnant and they are not growing. And when things stop growing, they start dying. Tension is necessary. Tension lets you know something is better. And life is full of tension because you have an inner calling. You have a Holy Spirit on the inside of you that is pulling you in a direction that your flesh does not want to go. It is pulling you to better. Somebody in this room is supposed to be better. Somebody say better. You're supposed to be further. Somebody say further. Somebody say stronger. There is more for you. And tension can frustrate you if you don't know what to do with it. Now, don't get confused. Tension is not condemnation. You're supposed to be further. You heard that, and you said that to yourself. I can't believe I'm already, I can say this to me, I can't believe I'm 40 and I have not yet blank. I can't believe I'm this old and I'm, and I'm single. I don't have any children. I can't believe I'm, I'm this age and I didn't uh, start a business. I can't believe I'm this age and, and um, I haven't bought a house yet. I can't believe I'm this age. We've all said that. Now that's condemnation. You've taken the tension, which was good, which is there to call you out of mediocrity and into better, which is there to pull you up and you've allowed the enemy to do something that he loves to do. He loves to twist what God is using to call you out and up and he loves to turn it into condemnation and shame. You should be better by now. Well, it's totally different. You have to understand what to do with tension. Tension lets you know you're alive. Tension lets you know there's more for you. Don't allow the enemy to come in and do what he would love to do, which is turn it into condemnation and tell you that you have failed and tell you that you're not enough. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. There is more for you. And so what we have to learn to do is navigate this tension navigate this tension. There's tension between where we are and where we are going. I can give you a very practical example as a worship leader. Um, not this church, but at my own church. Sometimes not everybody walks in ready to worship. Not at one city, but at other churches and other places. Sometimes I don't really feel like I've walked in ready to worship God. I know where we're supposed to go because as a worship leader, I have the honor. I have the responsibility and the ability because I've gone there before. I have the honor to take people with me and, and to go into worship and, and set an atmosphere for the presence of God. It's an honor and a calling on my life because of what God has given me. 
I don't always walk in the door of the church blessing the name of the Lord. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I just did a, a women's conference and I'm, I'm a little exhausted. <laughs> and I'm wearing a glittery suit so that you don't notice the bags under my eyes, okay? Sometimes you've had an argument in the car. Sometimes you got a call you didn't want to get. Sometimes you got a diagnosis. And so there's tension between where we are when we walk in and where we can get to. So I understand that. But something can happen when we come into tune with God, because that's all tension is. Tension is pulling us tight so that we can come in to tune. Um, have you guys seen a, a tuning fork? I feel like there's probably some people who are younger than me <laughs> and may not know what a tuning fork is, but it's, it's, a, a, it's essentially a fork, but it has two prongs, and they are tuned to the exact same frequency so that when one of them is struck, the other reverberates. So one goes. And the other, the exact same frequency, the exact same tune, the exact same sound. And, and God is trying to stretch us so that he can tune us to what he is saying. So that when he moves, we move. So that when he speaks, we speak. There's something about being on that same vibration. Look at somebody say, it's a vibe. It's the vibe. God is trying to get us on his same level and at that same frequency. This is why you are being pulled so that you can produce a sound. Your life is supposed to produce a beautiful sound. Would anyone like it? Because you're going to feel the tension. Wouldn't it be nice if it produced something? Wouldn't it be cool if all of that tension you feel anyway could be producing a sound out of your life? This is the reason you have to have tension. So I have a, <clears throat> I have a friend, Sam, has been waiting in the wings. Come on out. Y'all put your hands together for Sam. I didn't know Sam was uh, also a guitar player. I met him the last time I was here and he was singing, but he's gonna come out and we're gonna do just a little bit of audio. Sorry, Jamie. I figured, oh, Jamie will figure it out when it's time. And look, there you are, you're amazing. So Sam's gonna come down here and he actually, he carries a ton of tension. You may not even realize this, but each one of these strings, <laughs> also he has a baby, she's adorable, so there's, he agrees, there's a lot of tension. But he has this acoustic guitar and each string has been pulled tight. So go ahead, just strum, right? Ah, trusting God. Oh, we were singing it and it was beautiful. And his guitar makes just the most beautiful sound as long as it has tension. And then here comes life. No, it's okay, yeah, keep going, it's great. Here comes life and suddenly, because we have lost the tension, because life can, you know what? Sam, I think your guitar is broken. I think it's broken. I, I actually, it doesn't work. It sounds terrible. It sounds like trash. So I think we should probably just throw it away. I think that we should, so don't move, stay right here. Uh, I, I, I think that you're, you, you must be broken. You, has anybody ever told you you're broken? Have you ever, have you ever told yourself I, I must be broken because what's coming out of me is just, it's not good anymore. There's, there's, I've, I've lost the tension. I, I don't make the right decisions. I, I, what I want to do, I don't do. And the thing that I hate, that's the thing that I do. Well, maybe you must just be broken. Maybe you just, maybe you're just trash and we have no use for you. Sam knows this guitar is not broken. He knows exactly what needs to happen. He actually knows the value of this guitar. He knows all this guitar needs is to be tuned again. And so sometimes we have allowed other people who do not know our value to tell us that we are broken and to tell us what our value is based on some decisions that we made, based on what life came along and did and it knocked us out of tune and it took away the tension and I started letting things slide and I, and I started being okay with this. And sometimes we can believe a lie of the enemy because we have placed ourselves in the wrong hands. In the wrong hands, this guitar is trash. Even if it is well-tuned, first of all. But in the, in the wrong hands, this, someone will strum it and say, it doesn't work. Throw it away. Put it away. We can never be using it. Store it in the attic. 
But in Sam's hands, he knows what to do. I want to encourage you today. If you have believed a lie that you are too broken, that you are too far gone, that there is no use for you, you might be in the wrong hands. Why don't you check and see whose hands you have placed your belief system in? Who gets to tell you your value? How about the one who created you? How about the one who designed you? How about the one who knows exactly what you need and who knows how to produce a sound out of you? So it has, it has to do with whose hands you're in. And Sam, you can go ahead and you can fix this mess that I've made. Thank you, Sam. He's going to come over here and uh, Sam is going to do something that every musician understands has to happen. Sam is going to tune his guitar. And I'm just going to let him do it. I don't think we have to hear it, but he's going to tune the guitar. And by tuning it, what he's going to do is he's going to tighten each string. But here, Sam, here you go. E... Oh, hey, you had it. But let me, can I tell you something? I'm guessing what an E is. Sam will never tune his guitar to me. I am not his standard. He's not going to tune his guitar to the bass player. He's not going to tune his guitar to what anybody else says his ta- guitar should be tuned to. Because he has a master standard. He has a tuner that will tell him exactly what an E should sound like. And sometimes we've allowed other people's standards to become our standards. Or we've said, well, at least I'm not like sister so-and-so or brother you-know-who, and I'm doing better than that. But baby, you are still out of tune because you are tuning to the wrong standard. There is a standard that never changes. Sam's standard will never change. E will always be E. And that's what makes this whole band work that we are tuned to the same standard you have a standard and it is called the word of God and the hey everything will fall away but the word of the Lord will endure forever so if you find that your life is not producing the sound that it ought to produce check your tuning What are you tuned to? Who are you listening to? What's the music? What are the movies? What are you watching? Who are you talking to? Who are you subscribed to? Who are you following? Who is telling you how you should live your life? Because you have a standard and you have a master. And your father, if you put yourself in the right hands, he knows exactly how much tension it requires to pull the sound out of you. Oh, you can say amen to that. The word of God is our standard. We must come up underneath it. And I told you, Sam will tune his guitar before we start service. But do you know what he might even do? This is crazy, but this really happens. In between songs, guitar players will tune again. But you just tuned. You just tuned your guitar this morning. Why are you tuning it again? You... I, you, you just tuned last week, right? He just tuned. He played for Pink Impact. He, I know he tuned his guitar last night. Why would he even bother tuning it again? You, you go to church on Sundays. You come for Easter service. I go to Mother's Day service. Well, I prayed that one time. See, if the musicians have to retune between songs because that instrument doing what it's designed to do, just it can just get knocked out of tune a little bit, then if they have to tune up, we need to do the same thing. Because as we are functioning, even in God's hands, even how we're supposed to, life is still happening to us and it can knock us out of tension. And so you have to go daily This is why you have to go daily to the word of God. This is why we have to hide it in our heart that we might not sin against God. Because it's it's a little. Oh, from what heights you have fallen. That's what the word of God says. Let me just give you guys a little thought. This is not very high. If I were to fall, I don't think I would forget that. I don't think y'all would. I don't think you would let me forget. The Bible says, "How, how did you forget what height, from what height you have fallen. Remember, if I fell off of this stage and this is not a great height, I would not forget. But you know what? It's not, it's not a, a fast fall. I've gone up and down these steps so many times. I don't even remember how many times I've gone up and how many times I've gone down. And oh, what heights I have fallen from. Where I used to be. It just takes a little bit. 
And don't allow this to be condemnation to you. Oh, I can never get it right. I'll never be able to, to get this sin out of my life. I'll never be able because I, I can't quite, I just don't even notice it when it happens. This is the Holy Spirit trying to bring tension into your life and say, hey, 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 yes, you can. Don't count yourself out. This is not condemnation. This is a calling. It's not condemnation. It's a higher calling on the inside of you because the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit is calling you and and saying, hey, it's not a quick fall. Anyone would remember falling from a great height. It's the little decisions. It's the daily. It's the mundane. When we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And life is knocking the tension out of us. And when we think of the word tension, I'm sure we think like, you know, man, sin. I mean, there must be tension in sin. Actually, there's not. Fun story. Uh, there's no tension between your flesh and sin. There's, there's harmony. <laughs> Your flesh has no problem being in sin. But my brother-in-law and my pastor says there's a high price to low living. So there will be consequences, but there's really not tension in the sin. The sin destroys. It brings destruction. But it doesn't bring the tension. The tension is holiness saying, hey, don't do that. Hey, you don't have to talk like that anymore. You don't have to think like that anymore. The tension is the Holy Spirit pulling your flesh, which is weak, to where the Spirit is willing. So don't get it twisted. Your spirit longs to be holy. I'm going to tell you something that I did one time. This is crazy. I couldn't even believe it. We decided to fast and like kind of change our diet. We just wanted to feel good and be healthy. I so recommend. There's a reason that Jesus said, when you fast, <laughs> when you pray, like these things add to our lives in ways that I can't even give you words for. But we decided, um, and this was years ago, to juice. So we bought a juicer, which are so expensive, by the way. We got ours used. I didn't even care, okay? It was a great juicer. And we look up like recipes, okay? And so we do this recipe and it's got kale, uh, and cucumber. I don't even think I had eaten kale uh, at that point in time. So kale and cucumber and ginger and lemons. If you want the recipe, I'll give it to you, but I can't even think right now what all is in it. Uh, it came out, it was green. It was actually a really beautiful color of green. And I drank it and I was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> this stuff is nasty. I can't believe people juice and drink this stuff. And I drank it that day and I was like, all right, you know, anything to make me feel better, anything to be healthy, I guess. Tell me why the next day I woke up and I was like, I want that juice again. <laughs> like, I can't explain it. I don't know how or when or why I suddenly, and it wasn't even, it didn't even take a second. It wasn't like I, I kept drinking it down and just fighting through it. It was like the moment I introduced this crazy fresh green juice to my body, my body was like, and this is what we've been waiting for. No more McDonald's, Shanna. We don't want french fries. We want green juice. And the next day, it was like I desired it. I wanted it because it was the right thing. It was what my body was created for. Your spirit longs to be in God's presence. And you think that it's hard and the enemy will tell you like, oh, no, nah, you can't wake up early and pray. You'll fall asleep. Good. Fall asleep in the presence of the Lord. That's fine. Just do it. Just begin to say yes because your spirit longs to be in the presence of the Lord. Your spirit longs to be far from sin. Your spirit longs to pull you into holiness. And this is the tension that we have to begin to pay attention to. And not call it condemnation. Instead, call it an inner calling that is pulling us toward holiness to produce the most beautiful sound of abundant life. Does anybody want their life to sound abundant? Does anybody want their life to produce a sound? So when we're tired and when we recognize that we're not quite functioning at the level maybe we used to, maybe we've seen, that's all it is. Sometimes you, you, you can come in here and you can sit underneath great teaching and you can look at Apostle Feldshaw and you can think, well, I mean, he, he's never done a thing wrong in his life. And he does not, 
He doesn't struggle with the sin that I struggle with. Can I tell you, even Jesus wasn't always tempted. He was tempted to make a decision that would pull him away from holiness. And so we, we are tempted to walk in here and just assume that this life is not for us, that this life is not possible for us. And so we just get normal with like not resonating and not being able to hear from God. And we look at someone and we just assume, but do you know the reason why your pastor of this house lives the holy life that he lives, why he hears from God the way he hears from God because he tunes up he tunes up not his will but God's will be done in his life and he goes before God and he says if there is any wicked way in me take it out and that is not something that is that only he can do that's something you can do so don't believe the enemy who is trying to tell you right now, well, you're just this, and you're, just, you're not going to preach the word of God. Why do you need to live a holy life? You need to holy, live a holy life because your life is making a sound, and you can either sound abundant and beautiful and praiseworthy, or you could sound like Sam's uh, janky old guitar when I detuned it. You have a choice to make. So what pulls us back into tune? We've already talked about the standard. The standard is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, John 1, 1, and the word was with God and the word was God. So how do you get into tune? You need a standard. You need a standard. We come into this space and we read the word of God together and we sing songs that are, that are taken from the word of God together so that we can learn and come into tune. We're not just in tune because we've assembled. We're in tune because we are measuring our life against the word of God. And when we hear that calling to come out of sin, when we hear that calling that there is better and bigger, we believe it. And this is what brings us in to tune. You practice it in church. This is not the end goal. Jesus didn't come to give you church and church more abundantly. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. If this is the only Jesus encounter you are having, you are missing out because you, God so loved the world that he gave. You have a world and you are to represent God to your world. So you come in here, you sing the songs, you hear the word. This is practice. This is practice before the big game. This is not the big game. The big game is happening in your world. And Pastor Feldshaw can't go into your world. He wasn't designed to. He has a world that God has designed, the sphere of influence that he has, and he must bring God into that world. You must bring God into the world that he has given you, the family that he has given you, the friends that he has given you, the work situation that you're in. Even if it's dire, even if it's ugly, you have an opportunity to create a sound in that place place. You can do it. And your job is not to resonate with the world around you. We cannot look like them, sound like them. And I'm not saying them like they're the bad guys. I'm talking about the world and the standard of the world and the enemy and the devil. We can't look like and represent that. We must look like, sound like, walk like, talk like, our standard and who we represent. You have the opportunity to take his presence, but you can't do it if you're not in tension. So you have to learn to tune up. I want to tell you, you need to start your day in the word. Start your day. Just make it, a, make it even if it's little. If you're like, I don't really read the Bible. Cool. That's okay. Get yourself an app and read a scripture a day. Do something because the, the calling of God is pulling you. Go ahead and add a little bit of tension. Man, I'm having a hard time focusing. That's just tension. Don't get discouraged. That's just tension. Do it anyway. Stay in the word. Get the word in you. Yes, while you have little kids running around driving you crazy. Yes, while you have arguments and tension and frustration in your marriage. Yes, while your, your job is, is crazy and everybody's gossiping and your boss is wild. Yes, do, do it anyway. Get the word of God in you while you're taking the medicine. While you're praying and having faith, get the word of God in you and do it daily. So I have a few scriptures here. Philippians 4.19. I think we know all of these. But if you don't have these, 
just in the can for you, I encourage you, just get started. I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When we begin to introduce the word of God into our lives, we're tuning the room. We're tuning up. We're, we're saying not what I think, not how I feel, but what God says about the situation. And we find that we are pulling our lives into tune with the Father. Now, holiness requires the power of the Holy Spirit because uh, just we started this, uh, this sermon with Romans uh, 7.15. Just a few verses later, and this is the Amplified, so if you don't have the right version, I just, I'll be loving the Amplified. In Romans 7, 18, Paul says, for I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I can't perform it. And then in these little brackets, it says, I have the intention and urge to do what is right, but no power to carry it out. And if you're struggling with overcoming sin in your life, Maybe you just don't have the power that you need. There is a power that is available to you, and it is in the Holy Spirit. So if you're in the room today, and you recognize, you know what? I don't know that I've ever received the Holy Spirit in a way that, that I understand and that I've received, and I know that I am now imbued with power. You have power to overcome. And by the end, Paul is thanking the God who delivers. By the end of all of this, this internal struggle, this tension, and yet God has made a way for you. It is not impossible. Is it difficult? Yeah. It's tension. If those strings could talk, what does it feel like to be pulled so tight? What does it feel like to be pulled tight and then perform and then do something and then make a sound? It's not easy. But can you imagine no guitar? Have you ever, can you imagine no music? The piano, it has tension. The bass, it has tension. Every single uh, one of those drums, the, the top of it is pulled tight. It has to have tension. Can you imagine if you had no tension? It's hard, but it's worth it. And by the end of all Paul is saying, he's thanking God. Thank you, God, who delivers. You've delivered us, God, from this body of death that we have the Holy Spirit. 